everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're watching AMTV, Alternative Media Television. We've got a very, very important video today. Please, before we get started, share this video. Click that uh, bell icon. A lot of people have been telling me that they're not getting our subscriptions. It's not coming into their inbox, even though they're subscribed. So please give this video a thumbs up. It's very, very important. It helps us a lot. And also share it with your friends and family. I've done a few very, very uh, big reports in recent days. Uh, China confronts the United States in a U.S. warship in the South China Sea and makes an extreme aggressive overture threatening the United States Navy. Now, we've been seeing this develop over the years. Of course, we've reported this here at Alternative Media Television for a very long time. But what is interesting about this, what is provocative about this move, is it comes at the same time we are hearing rhetoric coming out from China that they're going to take Taiwan that they're gonna use military force against the United States if necessary, if need be. And at the same time, Donald Trump attempts to negotiate these tariffs and a trade deal with China. Now, I think uh, all we really need to do is look to history to see how this ends. I always say study the history books. In fact, there's a book, I'll put it in the description. I can't think of the title at the moment, which uh, is going over kind of the geopolitics and the specific geography of this part of the world. I'm reading it right now. It's quite interesting, and the one main thing that you'll come to realize if you study enough history is that economic warfare always leads to real war. Of course, an oil embargo, and not just on oil, other products, et cetera, was placed on Japan prior to the outbreak of World War II, and of course, the secretive, although your U.S. government really didn't know that it was coming, they used it as a provocation and a tool so that we would enter the war prior to the bombing of what they knew was coming out in Honolulu. So we have a flashpoint in this part of the world, not just in the South China Sea, but also the East China Sea. And China is confronting the United States in a very provocative manner as a American missile destroyer warship sails through disputed South China Sea in challenge to Beijing. Now, of course, they've been dredging up these islands for years. This is much contested by other countries in the surrounding area. China is very dependent on energy supplies that move through the Strait of Malacca underneath Singapore, which we just visited, which is one of the reasons why Singapore is so friendly to the United States. The United States controls this part of the world. So this is a huge provocation. And what's scary about this is that even if there isn't the intention for war, there could be some kind of accident that causes the war. Uh, keep in mind, it was the Gulf of Tonkin, which many well, it's pretty much declassified now. It was a false flag. It was a lie to get us into the war with Vietnam. But what worries me, keeps me up at night as a historian, as somebody who studies geopolitics, is what if it's not even the intention? What if it's simply an accident? And of course, we're just talking about China, not to mention Russia. And not to mention, I, I told you this here first, that this troop withdrawal allegedly is just optics. Okay, Donald Trump is really smart. I support the president. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, but this really isn't a troop withdrawal. What it is, is it's a repositioning of America's forces. And we've seen in recent days, through leaks coming out of John Bolton, of course, I mentioned this several days ago, that uh, we're not necessarily pulling out of Syria. We're not stopping fighting ISIS. And of course, if our Kurd friends are threatened, we will engage in war. With the ultimate target, and I've talked about this for over a decade, being Iran. Again, we've heard this from four-star generals and many others. So the target and end goal is Iran. China has confronted the U.S. with fury after it sent a missile destroyer through the disputed South China Sea in a direct challenge to Beijing. China responded by scrambling warships and aircraft to intercept the ship, which sailed within a dozen miles of the increasingly militarized Paracel Island chain. Uh, there's an image here of the USS McCampbell uh, moving into formation during a trilateral exercise in the East China Sea. So many are saying that this flashpoint is on par or more significant than what was once the threat of North Korea. Now, you should also watch the interview I did with Jim Rogers that uh, we just conducted in Singapore. Jim Rogers, of course, very uh, famous guy. Uh, he's an expert in economics. He started the Quantum Fund with George Soros. And the, this was some of what he was telling us off of camera, that we could have not just a conflict, not just an accident, not just a major conflagration, but in fact, 
potentially a World War III scenario. And again, Americans, we, we need to think of this through. We, we are not immune to this happening again. All trade wars, all economic wars, just study your history book, lead to, eventually, an actual physical confrontation and leads to physical war. And of course, we have to think about how they're going to reset the debt, how they're going to reset a broken economy. As we hear, the Fed is now going to halt raising interest rates, as I told you that they would. They'll uh, choose instead to continue with inflationary pressures. And of course, that's a problem because they're either going to hyperinflate or they're going to crash the entire stock market itself. Now, the South China Sea has become a flashpoint that experts have warned could spark a conflict that could spiral into World War III. China lays claim to vast swaths of ocean and many islands, but some parts are also claimed by the likes of Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Taiwan. I mean, and again, there's been very aggressive overtures to Taiwan recently from China. America's military presence and exercises in the area are a direct challenge to China's claim, which Beijing has used to justify setting up military bases and even runways on the disputed islands. So one thing that I would encourage you to do is watch China's moves with their Navy. Watch the Navy, because that's the weak link. Arguably, China, many would already argue, has already surpassed the United States in terms of economic power, but not military, or more importantly, naval power. So China needs a naval force and a naval power on par or exceeding the United States before we really, I think, get that next engagement or we see that accident take place in this part of the world. It might be an alleged accident. Again, uh, I wouldn't trust necessarily what you're getting uh, from mainstream news and pundits. America's military presence and exercises in the area are a direct challenge to China's sovereignty claim, which Beijing has used to justify setting up military bases and runways. And you can take a look at this map here of the island chain. Uh, they've spent a ton of money in recent years developing all of this. And of course, they are claiming it by military and naval force. We urge the United States to immediately cease this kind of provocation. In fact, if the United States flies through certain airspace right now, China will provoke and say, you're in Chinese airspace, leave right now, or we may attack, you know, something along those lines. So again, a lot of this is optics, okay? We've been playing this for a while. When Trump just got into the White House, remember he looked uh, Beijing straight in the eye, Mr. Xi Jinping, as he bombed Syria. That was one of the first military actions that Donald Trump took. That was a signal that, look, I'm wearing the pants now. I will act, I will use bombs, I will use military force. So there, there's this sparring occurring right now. Asked about the timing of the operation, See here, we're going to uh, another uh, getting a refresh here. Asked about the timing of the operation during trade talks. Lou said resolving issues would benefit the two countries and the world if they're going to uh, potentially come to some kind of peace agreement. Both sides have the responsibility to create the necessary positive atmosphere for this. China, of course, claims almost all of the strategic South China Sea and frequently blasts, provokes, irritates, almost like they're poking a stick, the United States and its allies for freedom of navigation, naval operations near these Chinese occupied islands. So again, let me stress, this part of the world is very dangerous. It is a flashpoint in conflagration for world war. There's a reason why China wants it and needs it. They're not going to back down. That's why they're flexing their muscles, so to speak, when it comes to Taiwan and some of these other Chinese alleged territories. So this is very, very serious. We really need to be on our tippy toes, and this is escalating at a time where I've not only done some just blockbuster reports, things that are keeping me up at night, frankly, and it's just so important that you share this video, like it, get out to your friends and family. When we've been warning, uh, the Department of Homeland Security has been warning of an attack on our electrical grid, an EMP. The president declared a national emergency yesterday, according to his own words. No, we're looking at a national emergency because we have a national emergency. Just read the papers. We have a crisis at the border of drugs, of human beings being trafficked all over the world. They're coming through. And we have a, an absolute crisis and of criminals and gang members coming through. It is national security. It's a national emergency. Okay, I've got a Twitter video. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at AMTV Media. I posted the actual script of the video. He declared a national emergency yesterday. 
Listen to the president's words, not to the mainstream media. He's declared a national emergency over border security, border patrol, and the border crisis. So things are heating up economically, here at home, with this divide and conquer strategy in the United States, and now this provocation in a part of the world that could start off on the wrong footing and cause a global engagement, if not a world war. Please read your history books, like this video, get it out everywhere. Of course, I'm Christopher Green, and you're watching AMTV, alternative media television. God bless.